Good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, Israel Startup Nation press conference before the Tour de France. We have a couple of guests for you today. It is uh, Rick Verbrugge, sports director from Israel Startup Nation. Then we have Omer Goldstein, the Israeli rider in the team this year. We have Sylvan Adams, co-owner of Israel Startup Nation. We've got Chris Froome and Michael Woods all today in the Zoom call. Sylvan, this is our second Tour de France for Israel Startup Nation. It must be an exciting moment again for you. This is the biggest stage of cycling. Uh, the, you know, it's, uh, it's the, entire, uh, the entire world is tuned into the Tour de France. And uh, for us, it's, a, it's a symbol of great achievement that we, we've made it. You know, um, our, our goal was to get to the Tour de France. And uh, here we are, this is our, our second edition. And uh, yeah, no, we're, we're very happy to be here. And, and this year we, we hope to make some noise. Chris, welcome to your first Tour de France with Team Israel Startup Nation. Obviously, you've done a few races already. You've done multiple training camps, including uh, one on Tenerife, as, as far as I can remember, with, for instance, Reto, who's also going to start this year's Tour de France for Israel Startup Nation, with Michael Woods, and also with Omer Goldstein. Um, Chris, can you tell me a bit more about your experiences? Yeah, I mean, um, of course, really, really excited for this year's upcoming uh, start over in Brest, um, especially given that uh, Brest was uh, where, where I first discovered the Tour de France back in 2008 as a Neo Pro. Uh, so it's done it's full circle for me now and uh, back, back to Brest again. And um, I think. In, in a funny kind of way, I'm heading to the Tour de France this year with a very similar mindset um, as, as back in 2008. I'm looking to, to, to gain something through racing the Tour de France, obviously getting, hopefully it will be a stepping stone for me to get back to my, my former level of racing. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really happy to, to be, be on the start line this year and uh, to be putting my recovery process behind me now. Obviously, you've been uh, been going to training camps with, for instance, Reto Hollenstein. You've been racing with Michael Woods before and also with Omer Goldstein. Yep. How is it to be with all these riders again in one squad in the Tour de France? Can you can you tell me a bit more about that? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got a fantastic group of guys um, heading into the Tour this year. Um, I think um, it, it's a team with, uh, with, with, with different ambitions. Um, we, we don't just have one goal in the team. But um, hopefully, at the same time, we can really look after uh, would be the best we can, um, especially through this, the first week, and then take counts and, and see where, where things go from there. Perfect. Uh, Omer, Omer Goldstein is also here. Um, Omer, obviously, you have also spent quite some time already with Chris Room throughout the races, throughout the training camps as well. How is it to be racing your personal first Tour de France with Chris Room, Chris, uh, without Chris, uh, I think he's the first uh, to the fans for me. So it's pretty big. Uh, I did the Vuelta Espana last year, and yeah, this year I'm gonna do the tour. But um, I'm very excited and come with a uh, good shape. And I think we have a really good uh, team. Uh, we have a Chris that. Uh, uh, really good and I saw him in Tenerife he was super and uh, we have a Michael Woods that uh, really can go for GC so I really believe him and yeah I think we can do something big. Rick Verbrugge he's the sports director for Israel Startup Nation throughout this Tour de France. Rick when is the Tour de France successful for successful from ISN's perspective? Well, I think the most important is to come back with a stage win. And then I think every team with a stage win will be already happy, except maybe the real big teams. But we have also ambition to do a good GC. And Mike Woods is, uh, is our lead for, for the GC. But we have riders like Dan Martin that can really target uh, some, some stage win. And then I expect actually a lot from Chris because... Um, uh, I see every time progression in him, and for me, the main goal is that he, he came back on, on a good level, and maybe he will surprise you in the Tour de France. 
Michael Woods, it's your first time as a leader in a Grand Tour, at least for Israel Startup Nation. Um, will that change your style of riding in a way? No, certainly not. Um, I'm yeah, really excited to be leading this team, but uh, I really want to continue racing the way, uh, the way I've raced all season. Uh, I want to race aggressively um, with always the goal of going after stage wins first and then general classification second. And I think I did that in the last two stage races that I've done, Romney and, Swiss, and Tour de Suisse, where I placed fifth overall. But in both instances, I was either um, able to capture a stage win or come really close. Uh, so, uh, you know, really excited to uh, be leading this team and uh, just also really honored, uh, especially with the level of experience and the, uh, the yeah, the, just the level of experience from all the guys you look at, uh, Obviously, Chris uh, being here, uh, he just brings such a world, uh, such a, uh, a great perspective and such a world of knowledge. And you have Andre Greipel, who's won on Champs Elysees, and finally Dan Martin, who, who's won uh, up the Mir Bretagne, which is where what we'll be tackling on stage two. So, a big honor for me, and also uh, uh, a great uh, uh, range of experience that I can draw from. There is a journalist, uh, Jean Francois Rachin, who's asking you a question, Michael. Uh, keep yourself unmuted for a while um, he's asking how important is it for Canada to get a stage victory in the Tour de France he says it is uh, a long way off since Steve Bauer's victory yeah uh, hey JF a uh, good friend of mine I actually raced with him at one point uh, uh, <laughs> when I first started with Garneau uh, back in 2013 uh, yeah I know it's uh, I think it'd been a lot to uh, Canadians to have a stage win. Um, I realized that uh, as a, a leader at this race, a lot of Canadians are going to be looking to me to have success. And uh, I feel really honored because I feel like not like this is also an opportunity to represent Canada at this race. Um, so it's, it's special. And uh, I think if uh, I could get a stage win, if I could do well at this race, then it's just going to inspire more Canadians to get on bikes which really is what motivates me most in cycling is to get, get people motivated to, to race their bikes and ride their bikes. We stay a little bit in the Canadian vibe. Another question from Jean-Francois for Sylvan Adams. Sylvan, um, obviously it's been a long adventure already with the team. And now there is um, also another Canadian rider racing the Tour de France for Team Israel Startup Nation. It's Guillaume Boisfin, who's coming from Montreal. What's your personal feeling about that? I've always stated that um, we are the natural team for two countries. Israel, of course, where we are trying to develop cycling and, to, uh, and, and, and offer a path to, to Israelis to, to reach the highest level. But of course, we're also Canada's team. We have um, four Israelis, we have four Canadians. And uh, we have, I would, I would say, you know, Canada's top talent in, in many, many years, Mike Woods. So um, Guillaume was one of our very first uh, recruits. Um, when we were just a lowly continental team, and um, oops, yeah, um, okay. and um, and so he's 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 been with us for for many many years, and you know I know Guillaume uh, from from back uh, when when um, I was a sponsor of the Canadian Spider Tech team, so we go way back, and uh, I think it's great that we're, um, we're 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 a home for Canadian cycling, and um, and. There is some background noise, huh? I'm not sure. I don't hear any background noise. Okay. But... Yeah, I do. Anyway. Um, hmm. So, uh, yeah. So, so um, I think it's great. Guillaume is starting his first uh, tour. So this is a big achievement for him in his cycling career. Uh, it was something, of course, that was uh, on, er it's on every cyclist's um, uh, calendar or, 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 or goal. Uh, and uh, he'll be riding in support of, of Mike. And, and uh, again, I'm really happy. We have two Canadians and an Israeli in, in, in Tour de France. That's pretty exciting. Thank you, Sylvan. I have a few questions now for Chris Froome. Um, they're coming from Samuel Petreguin. I hope I say that the right way. It's from Associated Press. Chris, um, how does it feel for you to be back on the race that uh, actually made you famous in a way, yeah? With uh, after such a long absence in the Tour de France, yeah, yeah, no, I mean um, after two years away, I've uh, certainly been missing it, and uh, I mean 
from a from a recovery point of view from from the accident i mean that being the motivator for me is wanting to get back to sort of france obviously and um yeah so it's special to be able to do that now with uh, team israel startup nation as well did you um did you miss the tour de france in those two years that you didn't race it very much so i mean i i i of course i missed being there but i mean um i mean the the first year I watched it from from a wheelchair so I mean it, it, it wasn't a feeling of I, I, I wish I could be there and it was actually a, a feeling at the time of almost enjoying being a cycling fan again I mean knowing all the characters in the Tour de France knowing the the politics the ins and outs of the sport as well um, it's I, I thoroughly enjoyed just watching and, and being a fan as well um, and then Obviously, you're now a little bit more in a supportive role for Michael Woods. Um, the the question from Samuel is: Is it humbling to be back in a supporting role? I think it, it certainly for me. Um, it, it, it feels great to be able to give back now um, in in a very different way to the team. I mean, uh, typically going into sort of France, I've, I've obviously got a lot of pressure on my shoulders um, as as a GC contender. But that, that's not the case this time around. This time around, I'm going into the race. I'm only focused on the guys around in, me in and trying, trying to do the best job possible um, to, to support the guys around me. So it's, and for, for, for almost the last decade now, I've been going into the Tour de France with a team that are doing similar jobs for me. So, I mean, it feels, mm-hmm. feels great to be able to be on the other side now and, and give back a little bit. So, um, Bram van der Kapelle from the Belgian newspaper Newsblad is also asking you, Chris, um, how can a possible stage win contribute to your career? Just if you win a stage, for instance, in the Tour de France. <laughs> I mean, if you'd asked me that question three years ago, I probably would have, wouldn't have said it, it, it really ranks anywhere really on, on my list of priorities, uh, winning a stage. I mean, of course, it's... It, uh, it's a nice to have, but when, when GC is, is, is your sole focus, it's not really going to change. It's not uh, defining in, in terms of your career and your Palmeiras. Um, but now, obviously, it's, it's, it's a very different scenario. Um, I think for uh, Team Israel Startup Nation, I mean, a stage win would be massive. It, it, it would be it, that's what success looks like for us, for this Tour de France. Um, so, um, yeah, it's obviously very, very different situations. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting stuck into this year's race. Uh, a question also for you, Rick, about Israeli rider Omer Goldstein coming in from Israeli media. What is your impression of Omer at the moment? Is he in shape? Yeah, already from the beginning of the season. I mean, I think it's one of the riders that make the big improvement in in the last uh, year, I will say, and he really deserved his place at the uh, at the Tour de France. But I think he raced a, a lot with with uh, with like Chris Froome and and the GC riders, and he's a, a really big help for the guys. But I expect also from from Omer that we will see him time to time on the right moment in a good breakaway. Omer, this question is for you. It's a question from Danny Porat from Channel 5 in Israel. What would be an achievement for you during this Tour de France? Please unmute yourself, Omer. Uh, yes, yeah, so for me, it's going to be uh, if I'm going to help, first of all, to the team and uh, uh, try to get some uh, stage win or get a good uh, place in the GC. And uh, second of all, uh, yes, to go some breakaways that go to the finish and try to, to take also myself the stage. If it's a, a mountain stage or hilly stage, I can, I think, uh, do pretty well in the breakaway. Uh, I saw it in uh, to Catalonia, in uh, Dauphine, and to UAE also that uh, maybe I can do something. And uh, yeah, let's see the legs, well, what uh, they can uh, give me. And uh, I hope it will be. Michael Woods, this question is for you. Um, you have a, uh, you're, you're the leader of the Israel Startup Nation lineup of the Israel Startup Nation team, this Tour de France. Is that something you prepared for? Are you ready for, to take on that role? 
Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm certainly ready for that role, um, especially considering I'm a, I'm the leader. I'm going to be the leader of this team, but uh, I don't feel like I have the same pressure as a guy like Primoz Roglic or uh, Pogacar or um, the three leaders from Minia. Uh, I, I don't have those expectations on me. I didn't come into the season with those expectations. Um, and quite frankly, with, with uh, the state of my time trial, I don't think that I deserve to be in that conversation for, for the win. But I do think that uh, I, I can be quite competitive at this race. And the way I have been racing, particularly on the big climbs uh, this season, particularly even at Liege, Liege Best on Liege, I feel like I've shown that I'm one of the strongest, one of the stronger climbers in the world tour. And uh, I'm excited to just keep that going. I, I don't feel like anything's uh, slid since my last race. I feel like I'm only stronger. And uh, yeah, I'm just really excited, uh, excited to be in this role. And, you know, had I, when I first started cycling, had you told me I'd be leading a team at the Tour de France, uh, that I, I would have uh, doubted, doubted you, quite, I doubted you. And, uh, I wouldn't have believed it. So it's a real uh, nice moment for me, for sure. Chris, this one is for you. There's a question about your recovery. Are you still recovering or is it finished yet? How is the situation at the moment? I think it's a it's an ongoing process. Um, I mean, um, in terms of uh, recovery, recovery, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with uh, where I'm at in terms of left-right uh, leg balance. Uh, I think from that side of things, I can certainly put that behind me. Um, at the moment, I'm a lot more focused on, on the work on the bike and trying to get back to my former level, having missed so much, so much racing from obviously the, the downtime after the accident and, uh, and then straight into the, the COVID lockdown last year as well, sort of accentuated that, that time off. Um, so, but, but I'm, I'm confident the recovery, the actual recovery from the, the accidents is behind me now. Now it's about regaining uh, racing form and condition and and getting back to former level does the 2021 season reach and live up to your expectations so far yeah i i think so i mean i, I like any, everyone else i would have hoped uh that the process would have been faster but it is what it is and uh i'm seeing uh improvements i'm seeing gains which which is certainly helping me um for this season i i think I definitely had to take a step backwards in, uh, in order to, to go forwards in terms of really focusing on getting that left-right balance again, which I, I don't think I'd really addressed properly last year, um, even though I'd come back to racing. So at the beginning of this year, I took a lot of time to really do a lot of rehab work on that, on that right, side, right side that was injured. And as a consequence, I think uh, my, my riding uh, was, was uh, compromised. Um, but since addressing that, I'm, I'm feeling, feeling a lot better and um, certainly um, it's, it's not through lack of trying that uh, I haven't, haven't got back to my previous, uh, previous level yet. I'm extremely motivated and I think uh, being with a new team has, um, has invigorated me in a lot of ways and certainly coming back to the Tour de France now, we'll, we'll do the same. Another question for you, Chris, coming in from Israeli media. They're asking, what are your impressions from Guy Neve and Omer Goldstein? You've done a few races already with them. You obviously did training camps with them. We talked a little bit before it already. But what is your impression about especially these two riders in the Israel Startup Nation team? Yeah, I've, I've probably done a bit, fair bit more with, with Omer than uh, with Guy. Uh, so, so I know Omer uh, a little bit better. Um, but I, th I think certainly he's, he's a huge talent uh, coming out of Israel and um, he's not just the token Israeli on the team. I mean, he's, he's actually there to, to do an important role in the team. And I, I believe he's got the ability to, to, to live up to that role. Um, Guy Neve, the same. I, I did a training camp with him. I think he's uh, yeah, a, a strong, strong rider for the future and someone, um, someone who's, who's important to the team. Perfect. Sylvan Adams, a question for you. It's been six years now that the Israel Startup Nation team was founded. Back then it was obviously called Israel Cycling Academy, which is now the name of our continental team. Anyway, um, it's been six years. How do you see the development of cycling in Israel after the foundation of this team? So I'm very proud of 
how things have gone. Um, we uh, we we have, of course, we've reached the world tour, which is which is something that's that never it happened in, in in Israel, of course. And we uh, we are racing with the with the best in the best races, uh, with the best in the world. And uh, I, I loved what Chris said earlier. Uh, uh, we don't have token Israelis on the team. They are legitimate pros, and uh, and 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 racing at the highest level. But more importantly, we're also developing the sport from underneath. So um, we have a, vel- a new velodrome, the first velodrome in the Middle East. Uh, we, we're taking a page out of British cycling, and uh, and 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 recruiting uh, kids. You know years old to come to come to the track and develop their skills and um and, and british cycling be, the uh, the uk became the preeminent power um in in, in, in cycling uh, winning grand tours and um and um olympic games uh and a lot of their athletes came through the track so you know if, if it's uh if we're talking about uh, bradley wiggins or mark cavendish or garan thomas they all came through the track and this started when when they built the uh, national cycling center in manchester for the commonwealth games so we in israel have these building blocks we're, we're, we're working also through the track bringing uh to the to the road as well we have our israel uh, cycling academy that you mentioned uh, continental team uh, we've got seven israelis that are that are there we're, we're hoping that um, maybe one or two might even make it to the to the world tour team uh, next year uh so to to, uh, to show how, how things are developing so nicely and of course bringing the giro in 2018 bringing the giro big start to israel created a lot of interest in the sport so not only is cycling the fastest growing sport in israel right now um i would say that the visibility of the sport and 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 you know people behind us, everyone in Israel watching um, here, uh, you know, our team, the ISN at the, at the Tour de France, um, you know, we feel, we feel the support. Uh, I like to say that, um, that the support of our fans um, is, is, is like a tailwind for us. The, the whole team feels it. And uh, for us, uh, again, I think um, we're, we're on the right track. We're doing great things uh, for cycling and, and Israel is an emerging cycling nation. Omer, last question then for you. Uh, talking about the cycling infrastructure and the ever ongoing developing cycling structure in Israel, how do you see that? Uh, yes, so I see it uh, pretty clearly and I can saw it in uh, the last uh, national uh, championship uh, last week. Uh, was much, uh, much uh, riders on the start line. So it's a, uh, you know, that more people, uh, more uh, riding, uh, racing and take a part in the, in the national uh, championship. And yeah, personally, I can say also in the bunch in Israel that uh, more and more young people uh, going more fast and more strong. So uh, I see a good future also in the continental team. Uh, also my brother there, uh, my small brother, Ido. And I see his uh, progression and I'm very proud. And for sure, I can say that uh, I see in the future more and more uh, Israeli in the World Tour team. And uh, we take more and more uh, a part uh, in the highest level in the world. Raising for Change with Israel Startup Nation. Sylvan, a f- few words about this uh, special project that Israel Startup Nation launched in Rwanda. So I've said it often. Um, we're not just a cycling team. Uh, we, we carry a social mission. Um, the, there is the ancient Jewish imperative of tikkun olam. Tikkun olam translates to uh, improving the world. And uh, this, is, this is in our culture. This is what we bring um, uh, as, as a team representing Israel, our Jewish, um, our Jewish cultural imperative to, to, to help help improve things in the world. So I, I myself was in Rwanda and uh, we adopted a women's team, the only women's team in the, in the country. Rwanda's a terrific country with lots of very enthusiastic people. We rode amongst them. You saw those kids wearing Israel t-shirts. It's really, really quite, it gave me goosebumps to, to, to sort of uh, see that again. 
And uh, yeah, we're bringing, we're trying to use sport and, and, and specifically the sport of cycling, uh, which is so popular around the world. Uh, we're trying to use it to carry a, a social message of, of trying to help uh, people around the world and, and have more unity, more, more community and, and peace around the world. So um, yeah, we carry our social message and I'm, I'm very proud of it. As I say, we are more than just a cycling team few words on this project from Israel Startup Nation as a, uh, well, a little bit of an African rider, so to say. What do you feel if you see the trailer? Are you excited for the uh, documentary that's coming up? <laughs> very much so. I mean, I, I obviously have got a very strong connection to, to Africa, having, having uh, grown up in, in Kenya myself. Um, I think uh, I, I, lo I love to see that uh, Israel Startup Nation is, is involved with pro projects like this in Rwanda. I think it's, it's extremely important and it's, it's, it's a really cool way to be giving back to, to the sport, in not just by developing cycling, but by helping people a lot less privileged than we are. All right. Thank you. Uh, this was then the last question, the last answer for the Israel Startup Nation press conference before the Tour de France. Saturday, we will be starting to race. We're all excited. Thank you guys for tuning in for the press conference. Enjoy your day, safe flights, and see you Saturday uh, at the race or any time afterwards. Thank you for tuning in and see you next time. Au revoir.